loves to talk about myself. I spent most of my life trying not to talk about myself. In fact, I almost achieved it recently. Um, we all have egos, I suppose, especially musicians. I spend, you spend most of your life trying so hard to not name drop and build yourself up, hype yourself bigger than you are, because it's all survival, you, but you try not to do it too obviously. Now, I'm being told, talk yourself, tell everybody, because everyone's doing it now, and this is the way you have to sell yourself with the digital age, all these things, YouTube, Facebook, the rest, all those bollocks. You've got to sell yourself, and people are telling me now, oh, talk, tell them about it. All those years attempting not to seem wasted. Anyway, here we go. Myself. Now I've got nothing to say. Now, basically, um, right, music. First question was, somebody had to get into music. 14, I suppose, 14 and a half, 14. My first guitar, nine guineas. Um, I remember guitars were a dirty word in those days, rock and roll, early rock and roll days. You know, Blackboard Jungle, Bill Haley, all, all that. Uh, but, and relatives and friends of my parents suggested I shouldn't have a guitar, it wasn't right, you know, you know sort of thing. But my father, good old boy, said, uh, no, he can have a guitar, but he has got to pay for it himself. He's got to um, sell something. So I sold my stamp album, I think, for about 10 quid. Bought a guitar for nine guineas. Um, action that high. Cut my fingers trying to play. It was... Oh, but I'm not the only one who started like that, I believe. Uh, the great, the great, one of my top people, George Benson, I believe, and people like that, um, when they started out, they were cutting their fingers, they were bleeding, I suppose. Um, it was difficult. We didn't have the low action light strings you have today on guitars. So, anyway, next guitar was an 18 guinea Hofler Senator acoustic. I had a little pickup extra for that for the neck. Um, the third guitar shortly after was like a 44 guinea um, Hoffner President Electric. Um, um, that was great, that had a cutaway. <laughs> Everyone wanted a guitar with a cutaway. <laughs> so, and then the big crunch was when I had to make a decision on my life work wise. My father offered to. Sign the higher purchase, that means installments in those days. There's higher purchase agreement for me to, uh, I had to pay it myself somehow, but pocket money or whatever, odd jobs, but higher purchase agreement for either a, what, what I really wanted was a Fender Stratocaster, Fender Strat. And uh, I had the option of that. Or a shotgun because which was a the guitar was under forty guineas I think with a hard case <laughs> at Jennings up in Charing Cross Road. It's the only place you could buy Fender in those days. You couldn't buy them anywhere else. Only at Jennings Music Shop Box in Charing Cross Road. And uh, the other option was a shotgun from Thomas Bland. Oddly enough, it was round the corner um, in William the Fourth Street. Then I think well, so we down towards Charing Cross Station. And that's just south, about a quarter of a mile down the road, not even that. And that was a, a side by side 12 gauge shotgun because the, the job I, ch the chance to become a trainee gamekeeper was in the office with my father through a contact. But my father wanted me to have an outdoor job and it'd be healthier for me. You know. So um, rather than working in an office as he'd always done all his life. So um, I had the option. Of the shotgun, which was 175 guineas, 170 guineas, or the guitar, 140. Wildlife was my big love up till then. Always had been, really. Ornithology, I was so interested, you know. I used to read the Observer's books of reptiles and study them thoroughly and the bird, and birds. And knew every flipping thing about everything, wildlife then. But I chose the guitar as opposed to the gun. and. Um, so I didn't become a gamekeeper, I uh, went into the music industry eventually. So got the Fender Strat and from that went on, I had a red Strat, it was a 1959 Strat if I remember correctly, was one of the first, Rosewood fingerboard. That now I'm sort of told it would be worth about 30 grand of course, something like that, 20, 30 grand. 
After that, I went on to Telecasters, a couple of Gibsons. Fender Tellies, I love Telly. They're the main guitar, the Gibson or Fender, really, depending on what you're playing. You know. I had a Gretsch for a while, big Chet Atkins fan. Um, went on. Uh, uh, professional band? Professional band. Oh, well, <laughs> my first. <laughs> Excuse me. My first band, my first group. I played I played bass originally, that was the first thing. Uh, that Red Fender Strat was sold to somebody in a band because they needed a bass player. I went looking for a job, a place called the Crown Hotel in Rayleigh, that was my first gig ever. I went to look for a job within the middle on the middle of the week, I went to this venue. Real rough place if I remember, the Rayleigh Crown Hotel and the ballroom out the back. Uh, but, uh, Sort of place when there were trouble there all the time, fights and uh, the bouncers used to throw the. Uh, it was upstairs, up steep stone staircase. I remember, and um, as in other joints that I've worked in later, the bouncers used to throw the troublemakers over the top of the, uh, over the wall onto the parking lot and drop them over the wall. <laughs> it's quite a rough place that. <laughs> you know, um, but, but I went down there looking for a job. The band there was a group called the Planets. They didn't have a bass player, but they needed one. Um, so they offered to buy me a precision bass if, if I, and let me play bass, providing I, I sold the Fender, Red Fender Strat, the 59 Strat, to the lead guitarist who had a homemade guitar at the time. Um, so he took over my guitar. I had a bass, a Vox AC30 amp. Came a bass player, I wasn't very good. Plectrum bass player, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I wasn't one of my bass players today, you know. Victor Wooden, I wasn't one of those, I don't think anyone was then. Um, but basically, um, did the, uh, um, yeah, I played bass, Planet, so I don't know how long I've been, about a year or something, uh, more. Uh, then I was in the group called the Espresso Five. I suppose they were the first pro band because they were local band, but they were traveling and doing the Mecca circuits. So I played at the Mecca Hall, the Locarno in Basildon, a new town then, Basildon, new town, with the Espresso Five um, as a bass player. Then from there, we moved to Stevenage, Locarno. The first stage I ever worked on, in fact, the only other stage I've ever worked on, other than the Palladium, where they have a revolving stage. I always remember a revolving stage, it was amazing. And I was pretty regularly drunk and used to fall off it quite often. It went down, but um, that was the Stevenage Locarno, and the the band that took our place at the Battle of Locarno was the Dave Clark Five, who hadn't yet at that time had a hit record. Um, and they came from I think it was a Tottenham Royal, I may be wrong. Uh, uh, that was up in uh, Tottenham, of course. And they used to come, they came down to Basel, and we went on to Stevenage. So. Um, we used to do that, it was good, but we used to go fishing on the way. One of the guys in the band was a king fisherman, and we'd go to Stevenage if the day was a nice weather. We'd leave early, go off to Stevenage and stop and have a picnic and fishing and a pint. Then we'd go on to uh, Stevenage Lacano. Anyway, I waffled on a bit there, digress slightly. Um, question, that was, and then my first proper travelling pro gig was with a guy called Steve Arlen. Um, he's, um, he was a cabaret performer, worked at the Paris Lido, the Sands Hotel in Vegas. Top, 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 what you might call crooner, top, you know. Power, really good singer. Top, very handsome, good looking dude, you know, so, with his satin lapels and stripes down his black suit and bow ties, those jobs. And I had to dress like him. In fact, my first satin lapel suit was one of his old ones. He was about my height, a bit broader than me. But um, uh, with the stripes down the trousers, uh, patent leather shoes, never worn anything like that in my life before. And, uh, and that was my first, my first, uh, what do you call it? Um, top traveling, real traveling beyond Essex, or Hertfordshire, wherever Stevenage was, beyond there, pro gig. And uh, my first, I went back on guitar for that job, he needed a guitarist. So I had to relearn the guitar very quickly, what little I did knew, know, 
when I started working as a bass player in these bands, those two bands, I was, we were playing three, four chord songs maximum, you know. Um, suddenly I had a two week period, I had to learn on the get back on the guitar. I bought myself another Strat, red Strat, yeah. Rosewood fingerboard, um, which I'd already had actually, because I, I lent that to Melvin in the Planets and he used to use that, so we all had things. I digress. But the, um, you know, I had to get back and start learning again the guitar, and my first thing was to go up to Chiswick, stay there for a week or two in this massive apartment of Steve's. Um, and uh, I had about two weeks to learn a whole cabaret performance. Um, and I, well, I had music, <laughs> I'd, I'd never seen a chord sheet, quite any sheet at all. Um, I'd all up here or in here, you know. And I actually um, had to learn, he got all these chord sheets, and I had, I had a chord book with me. <laughs> there weren't many, many guitar books in a chord book. I had to learn um, all standards, they're all standards, so you had all, suddenly in two weeks I had to learn, I mean I learned more in those two weeks about chords I've ever learned since, I just had to, otherwise I wouldn't have got the gig, so I was learning minor sevenths, major sevenths, that was all new to me, you know, um, and uh, um, diminished, augmented, flat fives, that sort of thing, and suddenly I was learning all these chords in two weeks, to be able to accompany him as he's a solo accompanist and hand the parts round on gigs to people, to the bands, where we had some put back in groups and I had to direct the bands. So I was suddenly in the deep end there. First gig we did was the Ascot Club up in Blackpool. We did the Empress, the Embassy. We did the clubs in, in the West End. Um, Steve also at the time used to do a gig, I think called Lunchbox in the Midlands. Um, um, Noel Gordon used to be in Crossroads. She was, I think, she was the compare, if I remember rightly. The group called the Jerry Allen Trio. They were great. Um, um, and uh, but he was doing that lunchbox with a guy called Roy Edwards. They shared the gig, you know. And it was a lunchtime program, obviously, nationwide, and done from uh, Birmingham. And we were staying in Leicester when we did the gig. We used to stay in Leicester, but. Uh, so, uh, it's, uh, yeah. jumping ahead, I, the Leicester connection, I had been, one of the gigs I had later in the sort of mid-60s was working for Engelbert at the time when he changed to Engelbert from Jerry Dorsey. And, um, and he's a Leicester boy, of course, so a few Leicester connections here for me. 